Money has come a long way since the first uses of shells or coins millennia ago. Today, it may even be considered our most used technology, as most people are using money that is recorded digitally. So what's the next step in this evolutionary story? Let's talk about tokenization, or how we turn our pocketbooks into something that's programmable. Why would we need programmable money? We use money to consume or save, and owning assets is a common way to save. Tokens can make it faster and cheaper to buy, own, and sell assets. Say that I want to buy a corporate stock or bond. Today, there would be a long chain of middlemen between me and that company. Think, for instance, of a clearinghouse, an independent bridge between the buyer and seller of an asset. It waits to receive the buyer's payment and the seller's asset, and then exchanges them, avoiding the risk either side fails to deliver. But waiting costs time, and time is money in finance. Another example is registrars, institutions that transfer a company's interest in dividend payments to the asset owners. A tokenized market can automate their function. Tokenization can make financial markets faster and cheaper through programs that automate or reduce the role of intermediaries. Researchers who've recently studied tokenized markets found significant cost savings. Tokenization's promise is visible in the numbers. But efficiencies from new technologies often come with new risks. Automated trading has already led to sudden market plunges known as flash crashes. With their instantly executed trading, tokenized markets can be more volatile. Also, tokenization allows chains of programs to be written on top of each other. In a crisis, these could interact adversely like falling dominoes. Another risk is that many new markets could emerge, and if their tokens don't speak to each other, known as interoperability, markets could fragment and fail to deliver faster and cheaper trading. That means specific policies may be needed for tokenization to really deliver on its promise while limiting the risks. Indeed, governments have rarely been content to stay on the sidelines during important evolutions of money. So if history is any guide, they may take a more active role in the future of tokenization.